Another type of image is called spectroscopy. This is a magnetic resonance image, so it's an MRI type technology, and it's magnetic resonance spectroscopy. And what it does is it looks at metabolites in different tissues. The main metabolite that's of interest in concussion, uh, well, there's a few of them, but the one that I really like is NAA or N-acetyl aspartate. The reason I like NAA is because it's found to have a high correlation with ATP. ATP is the energy molecule in your brain. So like I said, you get all this firing initially when a concussion happens, then you get a drop in energy. Well, how do we measure that drop in energy? Well, we're looking really at ATP, but we can't measure ATP. So the best thing we have is to measure NAA, which is correlated with ATP in a very high way. So if we could actually see this energy drop and see when it recovers, well, that's valuable information. And a lot of the studies that have been done in this have been done in animals, and they find that actually in this low energy phase is where the brain is very vulnerable. So this to me is the most important thing. When are we out of that vulnerable period? Right? When are we safe to return to our activities? When are we safe to go back to contact? That's really the important piece to me as a clinician managing athletes going back into sport participation is when are they safe to do so? So that's where spectroscopy is very interesting. There was a large study done in Italy and it showed that this recovery period, uh, actually there's a few studies, some of them showed between 22 and 30 days for that to fully recover. Other studies showed up to 45 days for that to fully recover, but there's potentially some variability here in people and so we really don't know in terms of that. But we do know from those studies that the recovery is longer than the thought, you know, seven to 10 day period where symptoms are usually, it just shows us a little bit more. So that one to me is the most interesting, but the problems with that one is that there's limited research, so we don't know what exactly other conditions might cause these same types of findings. Uh, we do know that things like stroke and damage to the brain causes the same types of drops in NAA, but we don't know if those same findings are found in things like depression, etc. So we have to do more research. Also, these imaging things can be very difficult to interpret. So I know that there's not a lot of people even doing research in it because it is quite confusing and difficult to, uh, to do.